What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today, I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and why backtest is horribly inaccurate and how you can fix it. One of the main reasons I got into Gecko, well, not the only reason, but one of the reasons I got really excited about Gecko was the RSI Bull Bear strategy. And this was from way back, let's see, January 31st, 2018, last year, when Tommy Hansen share strategy which was awesome for backtesting because this is one of the results that you can expect from the strategy if you had like i think it was um one thousand dollar i think it was the starting so the amount was one thousand dollar roughly i think it was one thousand i don't remember exactly let's see here um no sorry 100 simulation balance 100 dollars you would end up having sixty two thousand dollars because you made a sixty one thousand percent profit that is absolutely bullshit in real life it does not happen think about it for a second when you try to buy crypto on any exchange you're setting a specific price if you're doing limit trading which um that's what gecko was built for it won't fill right away this is not a market order especially if you actually ran gecko and at the same time checked um the order book on the on your exchange you can see your order can literally sit there for hours I have seen my order sit there for like at least a few hours sometimes. It's not always that bad, but I have seen it happen. So the problem with the paper trader is it literally thinks that every order you execute is going to be on the spot. So if the closing price is $200, let's just say this is for Ethereum. Let's just say closing price is $200. You're going to execute it at $200. No questions asked. That's almost never the case in reality it depends on the volume that's available it depends on um, how much you're buying yourself it depends on how how much fluctuation it is at that point if it's this vol uh, volatility at, you know for the particular crypto you're trying to trade at that point in time so the paper trader accounts for none of that so now i'm going to show you how to fix this so the first thing you would need to do is download the DB browser for SQLite. What the DB browser lets you do is view the actual data inside the database or the candles that are stored inside. So I'm going to show you that right now. So inside, when you open up a particular database in the history folder inside Gecko, I'm assuming you have some type of uh, history stored already. This particular file, I actually have like roughly two two years, almost two years of data for USD Ethereum, along with like, you know, all the other ones too, BTC, USD BTC, this is all for GDAX slash Coinbase Pro. This was, again, a while back, even before they did the name change. So if we look for the specific data, we can click on USDE, if I actually click on Browse Data, they'll actually show you, um, actually if I have to go in here, change it, right? So you can see the start time, which is stored in a Unix state kind of thing, so it's hard to read, but don't worry about that. The main thing we care about is the open price, the high, the low, the close. So this is the OHLC, which is what people look at, and this is what Gecko uses to close price specifically in terms of executing trades. But if you scroll over, you'll see there's more. There's VWP and volume and trades. I'm not gonna get into the VWP at this point. It's a, it's a way for you to actually, it's a volume way to price. You guys should look that up yourself if you guys are interested in the whole um, calculation for VWP. But what I really care about specifically here is the volume. Because essentially, the volume determines whether or not your trade is going to execute. Because let's just say, for example, right over here, this particular um, candle. And by the way, let me go back here. So each of these is um, one minute candles that, that's sorted in here because you see... Um, the time is based on 920, 980, those are 60 seconds apart. So basically each candle in each row in here is represents one candle and each of these candles are 60 seconds or one minute. Going back to this particular uh, row or this particular candle here, you see that there was a, such a low volume. It's only 25. This year, that means it's only 25 Ethereum that was traded um, either buy or sell, a combination of both probably. So that was traded on Coinbase Pro. So if you were trying to buy or sell on that particular candle, it probably didn't execute because the prices were just not agreeable enough for most people that 
it just there wasn't much trading going on, and that's what happened. So you you set a buy price that was top of the order book, but still wasn't there wasn't enough sellers trying to fill your order. Or similarly, if you're trying to sell, there wasn't enough buyers. I mean, this information doesn't tell you exactly which is which, but it does tell us specifically that the volume is very low and that. Most trades didn't execute at that particular candle. So now, what I want to know specifically is the average volume, because right now this particular um, set, I told you this is about two years of data in here. I want to know what's the average volume over the last two years, roughly, um, in here, and I can calculate that by using the execute SQL um, section here. But I'm gonna show you the commands you need to learn to use. So if you just go over here to a very basic SQL tutorial here, there is a couple of things you can learn. So this is a count, but we're not using a count, we're using average because we specifically want to know the average volume for the entire two years per candle. So essentially, you want to see what the average volume was for every candle. And I'm going to explain why I'm going to use the average volume in a bit, but this is how we're going to do it. So from here, just you select average price, and in this case, they use price because they're using put this above example here to get the average price. We're gonna put in average volume, and then from the sell products, we're gonna use it from our particular spreadsheet inside our DB browser. So going back to DB browser, and execute SQL, you can see that I have select average volume, and from our particular data sheet here, which is um, candles, USD, ETH. So from here, it pulls out the information that the average volume is actually 94 Ethereum per minute. So that's the average for the last, for the two plus years I have data for. And what I'm gonna do is this. I want to use this average volume as a reference point to determine whether or not a trade executes. So let's go into the code here. And this is Paper Trader. So I made some modifications. Right now, I already added this thing, a constant called average volume. And I set it to 500. So why not set to 500 even though this is only 94? Because the strategy I'm running is runs on a five minute candle. So five minute candle basically is times five. So 94 times five, and I round up a little bit to make it even at 500. So essentially the 500 represents the average volume per five minutes. So now originally, my idea was going into the long section, like basically going to update position method right here, and just saying, if it was a, if you're buying, like if what equals long, so if you're buying, what happens is if that particular candle, and you can see all this, you know, um, comment down section here, that's what I originally was setting. So if that particular candle that you're buying at, at that point in time, the volume is lower than the average volume, as you see here, then what happened is you're gonna have to pay a higher price for it because your particular strategy will end up having to try to buy at the higher the candle that high price instead of the candle that close price. So essentially this was just trying to simulate how you end up paying a little bit more whenever the market has low volume. So that was the first idea and inversely the same thing happens for the short where if there is low volume you're gonna end up paying uh, you, you're gonna actually sell it at a slightly lower price at candle that low so that was what I first did and it, it does affect the overall price so I end up seeing like maybe losing a few percent gains overall so um, at least on the shorter duration of, the, of this test anyway but I really didn't like the fact that this wasn't a true simulation of the uh, of the market because honestly you know just because it's low volume doesn't mean you could your order still executes in real life if it's low volume your order is just gonna stay in the order book so i needed to truly fix that so what i really end up doing is inside paper trade itself i instantiated two additional um properties here one is called previous advice and the other is called wait for volume equals false, uh, defaults to false. And I'll explain what they do. So inside the process advice method right here. So let's look at the second um, block of code right here that I added. So the first thing it does is actually it sets flags to delay trade until candle with enough volume. If your strategy issue is a buy or sell order at a candle that doesn't have enough volume, it's just gonna wait for the next one, and it's just gonna wait for the next one, and then it's so on and so forth until that candle that, that comes after actually surpasses the average volume. Then it executes. That is the whole point of this thing. So this really 
simulates a real life situation on how trading actually works in the exchanges. And here, so if it doesn't have enough volume, it's going to go and us, you know, fill in those two properties I mentioned, the previous advice, it's going to populate it with the advice that it got, and then uh, wait for volume equal true. So it's going to wait for the actual volume. It's going to actually wait until there is enough volume before it actually will process. And the last sentence is going to return log info. So basically at this point, it's going to exit out the process advice uh, method because it's not going to do anything at this point. It's going to say, oh, paper trader, not enough volume to process trade. We'll wait till next candle. So that's what it does. And then this other block here that I added. So this is what actually looks at the wait for volume property. So now it says, do not process advice and clear previous advice as they cancel out each other. So what happens is, let's say that you have a order on the order book, let's say a buy order, right, at the top of the order book. It's been hanging out there for the last, let's say, hour. Nothing has happened for the last hour because no one was willing to sell to you at your price that you want to buy at. So now your strategy issues a sell order because it thought that your buy order actually completed, but it didn't. So in this case, what this block does is actually it knows that it says, oh, hey, you know what? There is a sell order coming in and I have buy order that was uh, that was waiting. So let's cancel each other out. So what this does is let's say it's going to clear out the wait for volume and clear out uh, a previous advice. And it's going to return paper trader, cancel trade as previous unexecuted, unexecuted trade would negate each other. So that's essentially just cancel out the order and pretend you never actually bought in. So that's basically what happened here. So now that's done. The other block that really matters is right over here in process candle. So process candle, I basically just let it run the way it normally does, except I added this particular block right here. So if this dot wait for volume is true, it's going to say log debug. So this is just a way for me to uh, see the actual volume. So like if you turn debug on, you can actually see how much um, volume is, is there per candle. But the other part here is that if candle.volume is greater than average volume and this dot wait for volume. So essentially, if the current volume is actually greater than average volume and we have a vice waiting, we have a previous um, trade that hasn't been executed yet, we're going to call process advice in here and we're going to actually use the previous advice as the advice that we're going to pass in. And we're going to pass that in and at this point, we're going to um, reset these two. So wait for volume is false and previous advice is undefined. So that's all it is. That's all the code that you really need to do to change to fix this problem. Before all these changes happen, let's just assume you ran Gecko with the default paper trader that came with the default Gecko. And this is the, uh, the two year, roughly two year span I was talking about. So this is between May of 2016 to September of 2018. So where we cover a good portion of the down period that, that we experienced uh, on 2018. Not the whole entire thing, but a good portion of it. And again, this is USD Ethereum. So the default default setup, so with a starting balance of $1,000, you still make $67,000 in profit. Because again, this is the default setup. This assumes that every trade that, that was issued goes through. And that's obviously not the case, but it shows you a number of trades, 1,226, and makes 67,000, 6,700%. So now let's look at what happens if you modify the paper trader like I showed you this before? So instead of making 1,200 trades, we're now making only 1,000 trades, a little bit over 1,020 trades. And at $1,000 a starting balance, our profit went down to $35,000, $36,000. Our, our profit is only $35,000, $35,728. So basically, we cut our profit in half. Again, look at it. So we were, we were at $68,000 to 35,000, almost in half, basically, because of the fact that this is truly realistic compared to the paper trader before where every trade got executed. So now we basically lost roughly 200 trades because 200 of those trades didn't execute. They canceled each other out because we were just waiting for the volume to show up, but never did. So those trades are canceled out. We really only issued a thousand trades. And when I ran the back test, it was actually pretty interesting because it only took about two minutes, but still I didn't want to have it up on the video because it's um, it takes it just still takes a while. But when I saw it, I remember seeing how this balance was going up to like fifty thousand, like towards probably like around January of twenty eighteen, it was like fifty thousand and change, maybe fifty five thousand, and then I saw it slowly go down because 
a lot of the orders that I was trying to uh, execute. It just couldn't execute, I guess, at the price that we wanted. So end up executing at a lot lower price and you end up losing money as, as you really did happen. If you were in the market for 2018, you most likely lost money. And that's what this bot did. It was just losing money compared to the original version, which didn't account for those uh, volume problems. This thing, when I saw it, it was actually still making money in 2018, which was freaking ridiculous. It just wasn't real. That's why I'm so glad that I made this uh, modification. It didn't actually take me too long, but I should have got onto this sooner. And it just shows you that, realistically speaking, you still can make a pretty good profit with like a strategy like RSI Bobe ADX if you set up properly, perhaps. But more importantly, it's really about when you run the strategy, right? Because right now, we are probably turning from bear to bow. So most likely, we're getting into a bow trend, hopefully. So this is probably a really good time to run RSI Bobe ADX if you believe that we are in a uh, turnover from bear to bow because that's really where you can make a lot of money on but not when but definitely it was not the case in 2018 when we were losing money when the market was just tanking and it just wasn't real that RSI Bull Bear ADX was making money when everything else was tanking it just didn't make sense and now modifying the paper trader really shows that so that is my video for today guys let me know what you guys think leave a comment down below and as always i am on patreon so if you like the work i do i truly appreciate it if you would become a patron if it isn't crypto it isn't worth mining it isn't worth speculating peace out